In this video, I want to talk about how we predict the direction that a chemical reaction must proceed in order to establish an equilibrium. And we do this by using something called a reaction quotient. Because at any point in time for a chemical reaction, we want to know whether that reaction is at equilibrium, whether it's approaching equilibrium, or whether it's already past equilibrium. And if you recall, we calculate we calculated our equilibrium constant like this. The concentrations of the products for a reaction raised to their respective coefficients divided by concentrations of the reactants raised to their respective coefficients. Well, the reaction quotient is, is written in, in the exact same way. The only difference between the equilibrium constant and the reaction quotient is that for, for, a, for an equilibrium constant, we input concentration values when the reaction was at equilibrium. So the con so the concentrations of the reactants and the products were at equilibrium. With a reaction quotient, the concentrations of the reactants and the products can be at any time for the reaction. So I think with that said, you can see why K, EQ, and Q, how they are used to determine where a reaction is. So, as I said, the, the when we calculate the reaction quotient, the concentrations of the species that we input are not necessarily at equilibrium. The, the, the concentrations of the reactants and the products are determined purely through experimentation. And once we have determined that value, the reaction quotient, Q, through experimentation, we compare it to a known value of the, the reaction, the uh, equilibrium constant, which we were either given in a problem or which we looked up in a table. And finally, I want to note that that uh, the equilibrium constant and the reaction quotient must have been calculated at the same temperatures. Because if you recall, the equilibrium constant and consequently the reaction quotient are temperature dependent. So once we've determined the value of the reaction quotient, we will compare it to the known value of the equilibrium constant in order to determine where that chemical reaction is for that point in time at which we calculated Q. So I think it's easy to understand that if Q is equal to K, then the reaction is at equilibrium. It's a little more challenging to understand what it means if Q is greater than or less than K, especially if you're just learning this right now. But what happens is, is that if Q is less than K, the reaction will move to the right. But if Q is greater than K, the reaction will move to the left. I'm going to show you a simple trick to um, to determine the, the direction that the reaction will move if you're given a Q value and a K value. So let's say we were given a, que a question for, for a specific chemical reaction. It doesn't matter what it is. And we were told that the equilibrium constant is equal to 54. And we were also told 
that through experimentation the reaction quotient was determined to be 9. And then we're asked to determine in which direction the reaction must proceed in order to establish equilibrium. This is how we do it. And this is a very useful trick. We start off by writing K and Q in alphabetical order, just so you remember to do it this way. K comes before Q. And then we write each of their respective values beneath the variable. 54 beneath K and Q and 9 beneath Q. And then we evaluate. We look, in, we look to see which one is larger. Well, 54 is larger than 9. So we write in our greater than sign like that. Now, this is, this is how this works. We can think of this sign as being an arrow. So in whichever direction this arrow is pointing is the direction that the reaction must proceed in order to establish equilibrium. So it's pointing to the right. Therefore, we can say that the, rea that the reaction must proceed to the right in order to establish equilibrium. And that's how the trick works.